before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today we are going to be going through the comment section and answering your questions and going even deeper into the principles or some of the principles of the occult and witchcraft in response to the video I did over Gypsy Rose and her very famous spaghetti. Now, before we get into this, two things. One, today is Friday, September 27th, 2024. We are right in the middle of a hurricane. So um, all of my other videos that I had scheduled for yesterday and today, I have now rescheduled, um, mainly because I don't know if the power is going to cut out. And if, it, if it's just me filming, it's no big deal. But I don't ever want to disrespect somebody else's time. And so with the possibility of the power going out, we're just rescheduling those videos for next week. Also, if you hear my phone go off, like the warning sounds our phones make um don't be alarmed we've been getting warnings all day um because our the winds are now like 100 miles per hour and um everybody's off of work we're all just hunkered down so um so yeah if you hear that that's what that is if for some reason the power goes out and you see the video jump to me in different clothes that's why it probably went out and then i just finished this video <laughs> at a different time. Um, second thing before we get into your answers or your questions with the Gypsy Rose and the witchcraft thing video I did, um, on this channel, if you're new to this channel, if this if this conversation brought you to my channel, welcome. We love talking about woo-woo stuff here. We love talking about legends and challenging the narrative over here. So if you like that kind of stuff, if you like studying the occult, and if you like urban legends and conspiracies, then this, I hope you have fun here on this channel. I've got a huge backlog of videos. Um, however, you are obviously free to believe whatever you want to believe. You're, you are a free will human being. You can practice whatever religion you want to practice. However, I will ask on this channel that you extend that respect to other people if you want to have freedom of religion then you have to also extend that courtesy to other people if you are christian and you are happy with your religion that is great however do not come on my channel and start a b u s I and G other people because they don't believe what you believe. If you start telling people in the comment section or me that we are going to go to hell because of what we're talking about, you will be blocked from this channel. I don't know where in the world you thought that God gave you the power to dictate the salvation of somebody else's soul. But darling, if that's what you're doing, you're in a very narcissistic place and you are welcome to be Christian. And I know a lot of Christians follow me and they're super respectful and that's great. But the minute you start threatening people or using God as a weapon, you will be blocked from this channel. We don't put up with that. That is not cool. And I would ask that you, um, you treat people the way that you would like to be treated. With that being said, this is a channel where we go over occult stuff, where we challenge the status quo, where we look at the missing books of the Bible, where we look at hidden history. And so if that's something that's triggering to you, then that's a you problem. Nobody's forcing you to watch these videos. And so if that's something that's triggering to you and you're not ready to look at these types of things, then you probably don't want to be here anyway. 
All right. There's plenty of YouTube channels out there that follow the mainstream narrative. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there that are created by churches. I'm never on those channels commenting to them. So you shouldn't be on my channel commenting to to me or any of my my subscribers we we believe that god loves everyone on this channel even gypsy rose we as humans can point out each other's flaws that we see or challenge each other but what we will never do is challenge somebody else's path and somebody else's relationship with god because frankly somebody else's salvation and their relationship with god is none of our business you don't know what god has planned for that person you don't know the path that god has that person walking and even though i can i'll use gypsy as an example even though there are things about gypsy that drive me crazy there are things about gypsy that i I have no problem pointing out I will never question whether she's aligned with God or not because that is none of my business the law can take care of her as far as what she's doing illegal on this realm but as far as her soul that's not even up for debate okay or anybody else's soul I hope that's clear so with that being said let's go ahead and get into some of your questions now I think this happens a lot um, in all facets of life. When you know something or used to something and you're telling somebody else about it, I think there are parts of that information you might think are common knowledge, but aren't. I had one comment that reappeared over and over and over again. And as I was reading these comments, I was kind of assuming I was like, of course they know that this is jarred, right? But then I realized I did clarify that. And if you're not from the South and you're not used to this, you might not know this. So let's clarify that first and foremost. I had a lot of people asking if speculating, if Gypsy used her lining from her cycle in the spaghetti to create a love spell how is that possible if she's supposedly pregnant and again my bad i just thought people would have known this she would have jarred it most of the time when women do this type of spell they're not going to the toilet collecting what they need to collect and then putting it in the food 99 percent of the time it's already been jarred from a while ago all right, as gross as that is. And I'm smiling because it makes me so uncomfortable because even though I know all about this, I find it to be so, it's so gross. And I know some people did respond, thank you for me and said it's jarred. And one person even brought up someone who will dry it out, will actually dry it out. Now, with that being said, um, jarring your cycle for spell work is not just for love spells. So there are other spells that you can do with your jarred cycle that aren't black magic. For example, another very, very popular spell that women will do with their cycle, with their jarred cycle, is a fertility spell. Now with this certain fertility spell, if this is a spell that's done with you and your partner, like you and your partner, your husband, whatever, you both have decided that you want to have, bring a child together into this world, then there's no harm in this fertility spell. If you are doing this, fertil this fertility spell to try to get pregnant to keep a man, that's when it becomes a problem, right? For the baby and for the man and ultimately for you, right? So so with this particu particular fertility spell, it just depends on the circumstances, whether it's bad or not. But everybody that I've known, every woman that I've known, I've known a few women to do this, um, they've done this with the consent of their husbands because they are trying to get pregnant and getting pregnant is is proving to be harder than they initially thought and so basically this type of spell is taking your cycle in a jar and burying it now there's way it's more complex it, there's it's more complex than that so if this is something you're interested in doing a particular fertility spell i would definitely suggest finding a root doctor in your area or um, someone who practices a high level practicing witch uh, for the light to help you figure out because you you have to look at the moon cycle you have to look at when you have your cycle um, there's particular trees you bury it by but basically you just take it and you bury it by a particular tree at a certain time of month to help with your fertility um, women also will jar their cycle for health reasons like I know many women who have collected their cycle and examined it to make sure that they had the right correct nutrients i've never done that but that's not necessarily spell work that's just them checking their cycle just to make sure they themselves are healthy so that is how people do these spells they're not it's not performed typically when they're on their cycle because what you need to do typically 
is perform it usually around the time you ovulate because that's when energetically and hormonally there is more of an opening I'm trying to be very careful with how i say this um so you're jarring it and saving it for the appropriate time of use most of the time anyway so regardless of her being pregnant doesn't matter whether she's pregnant or not i know there's speculation about that it doesn't matter she's probably jarred it right i mean think about didn't she claim that her mother put the cow tongue in her lining in the jar like this is common this is common and again it's not just for love spells it's done for many 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 spells somebody asked about men can men do this as well absolutely it's more common with women to do this but with men um they do use a bodily fluid as well but and I, i'm going to be careful about how i say this but there is a particular bodily fluid that comes out of a man and it starts with an s so um that's what they use uh because it's the pope it's you know it's part of the reproductive organs it's part of the energetic matching you with the feminine so that's what they use um there are other spells you can do where you can bind the male fluid with the female fluid anyway so it just depends on the gender of the person as to what the fluid is that they collect for the particular purpose. But again, I think it's more common with women than it is with, um, with men to do this. So um, I actually talked about this too with the mom talk video. When it comes to intimacy, you need to be careful anyway. Like intimacy, I mean, do what you, you want to do, but any spiritual person that studied spirituality really deeply studied spirituality. Again, I'll, I'll put the mom talk video down there where I get into it. There is a karmic, when you allow yourself to be intimate with another person, you are literally energetically sharing karma with that person. And so that is why it's super important that you don't like sleep around. I mean, I think we all have to go through those phases to learn this, but you have to be very careful with who you share because it is magic, right? That is one of the most heightened states of magic you can be in. Yeah, um, there is bad intimacy magic and there's good intimacy magic. And if you want to practice with the side of light, you're going to be very careful with who you share that with, right? You're going to be very careful when you when you open yourself up to that person intimately. You need to make sure that's a person that you're willing to share your karma with or share their karma with. Even when you break up with someone in a relationship ends, you should go about three to six months of celibacy in order to cleanse the karma yeah um again i'll put the mom talk video down in there if you guys want a further explanation on that i'll be i'll be more than happy to to do that so let's go ahead and look at some of these other questions i know i wrote some stuff down too let me pull my notes out here um okay so one thing I wanted to bring up too is um, somebody also said you can use urine. Yes, you can use urine as well. Urine is also an extremely potent bodily fluid. Um, there is a book called the uh, the Shiva Samhita. And for those who are new to this channel, just to back up for a minute, I spent a lot of my 30s in India studying traditional yoga. So I do know a lot about energetic body just from that perspective too, which also goes into the, the witchy world, right? So um, a lot of people in, this, in the Shiva Samhita, and I, this is not, I've never done this. I know people who do do this in the yoga world. If you drink your own urine, allegedly what, what they say is that it can help you kind of reach enlightenment do with that as you will so they but i i don't i don't discount that there's potency there i just there are other ways you can get to enlightenment and i plan on doing those not where i have to drink my own urine so but with that being said every single body part in actually let me just go back to full screen for a second here as we talk about this every single body part every single genetic makeup biology in, in you has a energetic function right and again if you're not someone that is spiritual or believes in the woo woo or believes in magic this is not going to be the episode for you i am a full believer in the woo woo i'm a full believer in this in the spiritual life um and i think a lot of you guys are as well so knowledge is power knowledge protects so in all spiritual practices and in basically all religions there is one commonality at least one and that is the concept of what came first, matter or spirit. What came first, the chicken or the egg, right? 
in most spirit and all spiritual practices and most religions, consciousness, the spirit came first. And then the matter, the body, the earth, our matter, our world was a creation of that consciousness. In Sanskrit, it's called Prakriti and Purusha. Purusha is the soul, the spirit. Prakriti is nature. Or it's also referred to as the Shakti. So if you've heard that word Shakti before, Shakti is the creation of the soul. So your body is your Shakti. Now the body obviously is temporary. It's not your soul, but it is the creation of your soul. So when we look at the, when the soul decides that it wants to come down to planet Earth or wherever it's going, it's coming down for um, a simulated experience to refine itself. And so with that, in order to refine itself, it has to find places where there is resistance, where there is weakness. And that's where the soul is going to focus. So we call this your shadow work, right? So this is, you know, if you struggle with, with anger or jealousy, then your soul came here and you might find yourself in, self in situations where that anger and that jealousy is inflamed. And that is your soul's opportunity to refine itself. Because how do we get stronger? We get stronger through resistance. Like you think about if you want to get strong arms, you go lift weights, right? That's resistance training. So that's what your soul is doing here on earth. And so with that being said, every single faculty and aspect of your life from a soul perspective is created for this experience yeah so down to your gender your race who your parents are where you're from in the world there are some lessons that your soul came here to learn and so it creates this this vehicle for you to experience those lessons all right so with the physical body with that being said we're going to talk about the physical body and then i'm going to talk about karma and dharma so every single organ in the body not only has a biological function to keep you alive but it also has an energetic function for example my niece one of my nieces who's three years old she's very young she struggles with asthma already at three years old okay and so from an energetic perspective i know that that means she brought in heavy grief from a past life grief is something she's probably going to be working through in this life Okay, it's neither bad nor good. It just is what it is. Her job, especially as she gets older and has more accountability, is to lean into the asthma, to try to heal it, to try to refine that aspect of her existence. We all have this. Not one person on this planet doesn't have karma. We call this your karma. So we're looking at organs again. For example, the kidneys often are connected to knees. So if you have knee issues or kidney issues, that is often a reflection of fear, fear of the future. Liver is anger, colon. I struggle with massive digestion issues. That has a lot to do with um, intuition, psychic abilities. And for me, I, for people who've been on this channel, you know, I, I get like assaulted by spirits all the time. I've done videos where I've shown you guys, I just get beaten up. I'm very much aware of the paranormal. So that makes sense that that's something that I struggle with physically because it's something I have to work through in this life. So the uterus, when we're looking at jarring the lining or doing these types of love spells, the uterus for a female signifies a lot of things. It's the emotional well-being of a female. It's also the female's intuition source. And more importantly, for all of humanity, the uterus is a portal. It's a literal portal. All people everywhere like want to go find these portals. I'm like, look at your mama. Look at your sister. Look at yourself. You, you, you are a literal. People come through us. They literally come through us. Okay, so when we're looking at things like love spells and the intimacy of that portal, that's why the lining becomes so potent, potent, right? Because it's coming from that organ that is that. I'm trying to be careful what I say. Same with men with their, the thing that starts with the S. Yeah. So that's why it becomes so potent. Now, urine is also potent and it can be used, but it's not going to be as potent as the lining, but it can still be used in substitution. And so if that's something that you are interested in, not just for spell work, but just for your own knowledge to like try to heal yourself, then I would highly suggest doing some research into this. You know, I'm, I'm, um, 
with Western medicine, I come from a family of doctors. I'm trying to be careful how I say this. I trust it to an extent, right? We need Western doctors to an extent. Yeah, they put the band-aids over stuff. But in order to actually heal what's going on, we have to look at the psyche and the emotional energy of the person. Yeah, but they're good in the moment for like band-aids, right? To help us work with the body as so if you can combine the two if you can combine energetic healing with western medicine you're golden right you can you can really work through some heavy karma in this life now we're going to talk more about karma in a minute but i just wanted to kind of explain the difference in between using different bodily fluids for different spells because of the potency of the organs so now i hope that makes sense again if something is confusing about what i'm saying please let me know in the comment section and we can do further explanation into this. Oh, another thing, sorry, another thing I meant to tell you guys, your nostrils, right? Your nostrils. So I have my nose pierced on the left side, which is feminine. Right side is masculine, okay? So we have both energies. We have both the energies in our body of masculine and feminine. Left side, nostril feminine, right side is masculine. These are nadis. They go through the body. They go through the chakra system. We have like 72,000 or something nadis in our body. They're like little creeks of energy, but only three that we really focus on. The two nostrils and shushumna, which is a nadi, a line of energy that goes up the spine from the perineum all the way up through the head, right? And so in more black magic cases, especially where young ones, I'll say, are involved, that is why they do things like hurt the young ones in inappropriate ways again i'm trying to be careful how i say this in intimacy intimate standards does that make sense like what we're seeing with the rapper and his famous parties that just went down like that's the black magic because when you're forcing that on a child you're taking the essence the essence of that spiritual knowledge from the perineum Okay. And so that's why things like RAPE are horrible anyway on a physical level and should never be done. But they're also in a spiritual level are just as bad because you're messing with that person's pelvic floor, which is literally the base of Kundalini. Okay. And they're doing that. That's why they do that. That is why they do that is specifically for that, that spiritual essence, we'll say. So the more that you learn about the body, the more, more that you learn about the energetic uh, faculties of the body, the more than you're going to be able to have autonomy over yourself and start to understand the world around you even better, especially when it comes to the occult. You know, a lot of people are familiar with the seven chakras, but the seven chakras don't mean anything if you don't know what the bandhas are. So if you don't know what Mola Bandha is or Uddiyana Bandha is or Jalandhara Bandha is in the throat, then studying the chakras mean nothing because the energy that's coming up, Shashumna, which aligns, which runs through the chakras. If you are not familiar with contracting Mola Bunda, then you're losing all that energy anyway. You're giving that energy away anyway. So, so that is something I would say, if you've never heard of that, but you do know the chakras, I would say, take a step back, go and study the Bundas first, and then the chakras are going to make more sense because through the chakras, we have extensions, right? Like the arms, Anahata is here. That's the heart chakra. The hands extend, the arms are an extension of Anahata. And we have energy cycles in our palms as well, which come from Anahata. So that's why we see the hands can act in, a, in, in um, motions of love and actions of love or in harmfulness, depending on how Anahata is. So it starts to make sense. I hope that makes sense. All right, let's go back now to these questions. All right, let's see here. Yes, I love this. In Oklahoma, we have Indian medicine, and it can be used for good or for bad, just like any of it. And that is so important. Yeah, because any type of medicine, guys, any type of magic can be used for, it's just a tool, right? It's like tarot cards. Are just tools that's all they are they can be used for good or for bad like with tarot cards for example if you're pulling your tarot cards on other people without their consent then you're you're acting in darkness like that they don't they didn't give you permission right so so you you know you tarot cards are supposed to be used for you to understand your own intuition better not involving anybody else okay so absolutely they're, they're just tools you as the person have a choice um whether or not you're using it for good or for bad and yes um in oklahoma it's so funny oklahoma for those who are not from the united states oklahoma is a fascinating state because it is kind of southern but also kind of midwestern 
it's kind of on the border. And so I would definitely say absolutely. There's probably way more Indian medicine in Oklahoma than more African based medicine. Um, so that's super interesting. I would actually, uh, is that Brenda Bailey? I would love to hear more about that because I find this, I'm of the opinion that culture should be shared. I think culture should be shared. That's why I love making these videos because it's so cool to like talk about my own culture and then hear about y'all's culture. So cool. Um, so here's another one about her being pregnant again, the jar spell you use jar. Um, let's see here. So I think I covered this um, from H and L uh, Marie. I have heard of binding before. Now I'm wondering if it's in the DNA, why can't you just spit in it? I'm hoping that my further um, information about the organs having different energetic purposes answered your question. I'm hoping that answered your question. I mean, yeah, there's going to be DNA, but it's not just about the DNA. It's about the energetic properties of the organs that create these fluids. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, this has been done with Mexican spells. Mexico's got a lot of magic, you guys. And if you go to South, uh, South Florida which is not part, for those who are not from the United States, South Florida is not technically a part of the South or the Deep South. I know that's strange because it's South of us, but there's a there's a lot of um, Mexican uh, spell work in South Florida, obviously, as well as Mexico, but there's a huge Mexican influence. I mean, Florida is a Spanish word anyway. Um, and we don't have as much of that in the Southeast, the influence from the Mexican um, spell work. Um, but yes, it's heavy in Mexico, very heavy in Mexico. And um, a lot of times it doesn't turn out well, we're going to get into that in a minute as to why that is. But a lot of times, no, it doesn't. Um, it does not turn out well. Let's see here. Now this I picked up Amelie from and I'm from New York. Yeah. So I think you guys missed and I responded here to somebody else. I think you guys missed what I was referring to. Um, when it came to what Gypsy was doing, especially with Dee Dee, which we're going to talk about Dr. John again in a minute when we get to one of the comments. I know magic and the occult exist everywhere. And I've lived, listen guys, I've lived all over the world. And I'm telling you, the Southern culture, what I was saying is that this is part of our culture down here, right? So there's going to be Spanish, uh, there's going to be all over the world, there's going to be spell work being done, right? People are going to practice the occult everywhere. But down here in the South, it's literally a part of our, it's interwoven into our daily lives. Um, for example, when my sister got pregnant for the first time, she has four kids now, but her first, her first son, her first baby, we got, we were at my mom's house and my mother literally yanked a piece of hair out of my sister's head, pulled a ring off of my sister's finger, tied the hair to the ring and used it like a divination tool over my sister's palm to see what sex the baby was going to be. Now, that's just normal down here to do that kind of stuff, right? That's part of our, my mother is someone who goes to church every Sunday and knows the Bible's forwards and backwards. You know, it's common to go to people's houses and see the roof of their porch painted blue. Why, you might ask? Because it's scaring the demons away. So this is my point, And we're going to get back to the Dr. John interview in a second where I said he totally missed this. This is, yes, occult and magic is practiced everywhere but it's part of our culture here in the South. It's part of our everyday culture here in the South. And that's something I can't really explain to people who aren't from the South until they've lived here for a while. I had a friend when I lived out in California, I had a friend who went to school in Savannah, Georgia. Um, she went to SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design, which is a very, very um, prestigious art school in Savannah, Georgia. And she would laugh with me because she lived in the South for for such a long time and she was like when i she was from like wyoming or something originally and she was like when i first moved down to the south i would see all these chicken bones everywhere and i thought man people really do like to eat chicken down here and then she was like after a while i realized those chicken bones were not from meals they were they were from spell casting and i laughed and i was like yeah that's just that's just what she goes yeah that's just what happens in the south you see it everywhere in the south everywhere and if you're not from here like she the when she first got here she thought people were just leaving their trash everywhere and over time of her being here in the south she realized it was actually from spell work all right so um you uh, official artist channel cc Chalez, I hope I'm saying your last name right cc let me know if I did not say that right I heard she would practice magic in prison would not surprise me would not surprise me um yeah i mean now this is there any reason to think she's been practicing magic on ryan or nick now in my personal opinion i have not seen evidence that she was practicing 
uh, magic on Ryan or Nick. I think with Ryan or Nick, she just, Ryan and Nick, I think she just flat out manipulated them. I think it was easy with Nick because of his disability. Um, I think with Ryan, it was easy because she was in prison. So she could keep her mask on and play the damsel in distress. Um, and I think she needed Ryan. Again, I know a lot of people have talked about this, and I absolutely agree. I think she needed Ryan because Ryan looks good on paper. And I, if she is pregnant, if Ryan sees this, I hope to God the baby's yours because you would be the best person for that child. So I don't know if she necessarily was doing any type of spell work. I think she literally was just manipulating them. And that's a lot of women do that. So, um, yes, let's see here. All right. This is something I wanted to, to talk about too. We'll get into karma. So I see what this person is saying. Sorry, guys, let me find my glasses because I'm having a hard time seeing y'all's handles properly to get your names right. All right. Okay. So you say the only way I'd say this is explicitly black magic is if he wants nothing to do with her. If your goal is to force someone into something false and against their will, if there is interest or connection on any level, it's not that. If he is in some type of relationship, spending time with having unprotected with her, he's either interested in her on some level or he's playing with his own dangerous game by using someone who seems fairly unstable. Let's just pray for that innocent baby. I disagree with this and I did respond. So I'll read my response here. I absolutely disagree. And we're going to get into it a little bit deeper. I see what you're saying though, but I, I we, we have to look at this with more complexity with the soul and karma. All right. So even if a person loves you at the moment to do anything to manipulate that beyond its natural cycle is black magic. If the spell consists of any type of unnatural manipulation that changes the outcome for another person without their free will is black magic. Light magic works with nature. Black magic works against nature for a selfish outcome. The only type of magic that is light magic that works it, is work, magic that works on the self, as in you, in a way to heal the self or help the self move through natural cycles. It should never involve another person. So let me explain this a little bit deep, a uh, little bit on, on a deeper. So if, I, if my boyfriend came to me and said, I don't ever want to leave you. I want you to do this spell. I want you to cook it in the spaghetti so that we can be together forever. I would even, I would say no, I would never do that. Here's why. As I was, so karma, all karma is, is cause and effect. That's all it is. Okay. And as we were talking about earlier with the organs and the Shakti and the creation of the body and the life, when your soul is coming to earth, again, your soul is creating a, a template of life for you to refine yourself. And in that template, other souls have contracted with you to come in and out of your life. Some souls are here for a long time with us, the more dharmic relationships we have, and then some are more karmic, where they're temporary. And again, karmic isn't always bad. Sometimes there's a good lesson. There's a good thing we're learning from people. So we've all had relationships in our life, especially romance relationships, where we're so in love. We, we never want to leave this person. We want to be with this person forever. We just think they're the bee's knees and we will do anything to keep that person. And then the relationship runs its course. And when the breakup happens, there's devastation and you're heartbroken. But then years later, you look back and you're so glad that the relationship ended because other doors and other opportunities opened to you when you surrendered to the finalization of the relationship. So if you do something like spell work that's going to mess with the natural cycle of your soul's contract or that person's soul's contract, you are doing a world of hurt to yourself and that other person. You need to trust the natural cycle of the relationship. Like my boyfriend, I trust him. You know, if, if I don't think our relationship's going to end, to be honest with you guys, I think we're probably going to be together for a very long time. But, um, but regardless it's a natural relationship. None of us have done. And my boyfriend knows a lot about the occult. Like he's way more um, educated in the occult than I am, but he's not doing any spell work because he believes like I do that you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful about messing with the natural cycle of things. Right. And so, you know, it, even if, even if you're super in love with the person at the time, you need to trust if that relationship karmically and dharmically is meant to be in your life for the rest of your life. It will be. If it's not, it won't be. 
And if it's not, once it, the time has run out, it's run its course, and you both part ways, you are then opening up yourself to more of your template, more opportunities, right? But if you try to stop that, then you've closed yourself off to the, and that person off to the natural cycle of your life. So the Navajos taught this really well when I was first studying the skinwalkers. I've said this before. The Navajo taught their children. And for those who are not from the United States, the Navajo are a tribe, a Native American tribe from the western part of the United States, so like the Arizona area, or what would be the Arizona area. They taught their children that magic was real and that as you grow up, you have to pick between light magic and black magic. And they picked, they said that, you know, white magic was you working with nature, that you weren't trying to change nature, that you were using magic to help you or somebody else who asked for your help work through and surrender to the natural cycles of, of your life. Black magic, however, is when you work against nature for your own selfish outcome. So again, with that being said, all relationships have their natural cycle. They're natural, which comes from the word nature, cycle. And if we try to change that, even if both participants are willing, we've gone to black magic. All right. And also think about it this way, guys. How many, I know there, I mean, this has never happened to me, but how many stories have I heard of people and probably some of you watching where you dated someone for a really long time when you were younger and you broke up and you both went your own separate ways. And then years later, you come back together and you're in a happy relationship now. Well, that time apart, there needed to be a separation for the growth of each person's soul. I know with the whole twin flame thing that most twin flames don't meet each other until way later in life, like way later in life. They don't, your high school sweetheart is not your twin flame. You know, you'll be in your forties or your fifties when you meet your twin flame. So what would happen if you had done a binding spell in your thirties, not realizing that your twin flame is coming in your 40s or 50s, right? So we have to trust. And, and, and that comes down to like any time that we're doing black magic, we're not trusting God. We're not trusting our own souls. And so that's the real problem, right? Is like, where are we misaligned with God? Where are we trying to control the destiny that we've already planned for ourselves anyway? Does that make sense? Let me know if that doesn't make sense. All right. I remember years ago when my friend's cousin, who was Greek, told me about the menstrual cycle spells. She did it on a guy. He was Farsi, and she was obsessed with him, and it did not work. I would not want anyone who doesn't want me exactly. Most of the time, they, they don't work. Most of the time, they backfire. First of all, if you are doing, um, if you're doing any type of black magic to control another person's free will, you it's not just one and done. Right, you're gonna have because spells do wear off, like like um, any type of anything. There's an expiration date, right? So it's constantly having to to do the magic. So you're constantly going to be having to continue to do the spell work. Now, another thing about spell work too. My friend Cindy, who's from Peru, she talks about this a lot. Whenever you do spell work, you're the conduit. So what does this mean? This means that it has to come through you first. So. People who practice black magic, unless they're able to drink the red stuff that starts with an A that I can't say, which is awful. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. I can't say this on you, this word on YouTube. Um, over time, they're going to start to learn, look haggard. That's where we get the word hag from, right? It's very common for their teeth to fall out. Um, they start to age rapidly because the black magic is having to come through them. Okay? There's always... There's always a cause and effect. There's always an action and a reaction. And so um, I've known people on YouTube who do black magic and their teeth have fallen out, right? There's always, there's all, but when you do light magic, usually you start to look younger. You start to, you know, you're helping people who ask for your consent or have asked for your help. You're starting to radiate that light because you're, the light has to come through you. So if, if nothing else convinces you not to do black magic, let vanity be the thing that convinces you not to do black magic. I heard voodoo is like protection and witchcraft is also used as protection. Yep, yeah, exactly. 100%. Every person I know who practices voodoo or any type of witchcraft does it for the light. I don't know anybody personally. I, mean, I know people on YouTube who do it, but those people are not in my life anymore uh, because of that. I don't want any part of that. I don't want any part of hurting somebody else, of taking away somebody else's free will. Like how narcissistic is that to try to control the outcome of somebody else's life and their free, free will? It's just so effed up. 
um, the way Ken looks at her and his body language, even when it, when it braces, looks like he's not comfortable in his skin at all. He looks and treats her the way she treated Ryan. Doesn't that mean it? Does that mean it backfired? I think I responded, karma's a bitch. Um, yes and no. So what happens when people are under this type of love spell is it's like an addiction. So how many people um, do you know in your life who have been alcoholics or had some form of addiction and they know it's bad for them? Like they know it's bad. But they know they should say no, but they can't help themselves. That's what happens a lot of times in love spells, right? They know that this is toxic. They know, but they have this need to come back to that person. Okay. So if he looks uncomfortable, it's showing the friction within his own psyche. So his mind might be saying, this is so bad for me and I'm not attracted to this person. I personally, in my opinion, I don't think that Ken is straight. That's just my opinion. It doesn't matter. It's his business. But I, that to me kind of screams that he's not actually interested in women, um, which would be even more friction in her, in his mind. If that's, if he doesn't have the propensity to be attracted to women, but he's had a love spell put on him. So that might be what you're seeing. Marina is that you, have, you might actually be seeing the effect of the spell. If, if speculating that if spell work was done. So, but why didn't Dee, Dee do it to Rod? Maybe she really wanted that into black magic, but gypsy was and is she's the most dangerous psychopath I have ever seen. Very scary. So Andrea, I, I know I responded. Um, I don't think that Dee, Dee actually was into black magic. I think that, and we'll get this more with um, the Dr. John, because there's a question here about Dr. John and what I said about his analysis of this. I think Gypsy threw that out to manipulate people. I don't think that Dee Dee was any more into magic than I am or any other person. Remember, she's Creole. She's from the New Orleans area. Like, she's not from New Orleans, but she's from the bayou. So this is normal for her. I don't think that Dee Dee was ever... She might have done things here and there, like I do, like root work here and there, but I don't think she was necessarily doing black magic. Um, again, we're going to get back to the whole the story Gypsy told in a minute. I think that in the beginning, Dee Dee was a young girl and Rod was a young boy. And I think that in this love triangle that they were in, I think that Dee Dee was trying to manipulate Rod into staying with her like a lot of women do. But I think over time, as she realized that Rod wasn't ever going to come back to her, she surrendered to it. You know, because we know through other people that... Um, there's notes and letters she would get the other kids gifts um they called her mama Didi. so there there seemed to be some harmonious mixed family relationship between all of them before she was unalived and so i don't think that she ever did anything like that to rod all right um oh cool so fly like a bird yeah rossi very interesting please please do more videos like this i enjoy listening and learning about new things while i'm working thank you well hopefully rossi Fly like a bird, Rossi. Hopefully this is entertaining to you. Again, let me know if there's more you want me to um, elaborate on. All right. Okay. Yeah, I completely agree. I've heard and seen stories of those kinds of love spells snapping back on people badly. Yep. Never do it. You will attract what is meant for you. 100% ashes to ashes. That is one, one, one. That is exactly what I was basically saying. Like whatever you have to trust that your soul knows what it's doing and that person's soul, the other person's soul knows what it's doing. And there's always, you know, one of my favorite mantras is um, some of the best days of your life haven't even happened yet. That's one of my favorite mantras. Some of the best days of your life have not even happened yet. There's so much to look forward to, you know? Um, yeah, I think she's a sociopath as well. Solitary Kitchen Witch from here from Missouri. I only do protection spells. Hope she stays off the show. Show me out of the show. We stay. Yep. Awesome. So yeah. So Missouri uh, KLB 888 is where this whole thing took place. Yeah, girl, I get you. You get what I'm saying. KLB gets what I'm saying. Totally. Like I only do protections for me, basically for me and for anybody who asks. That's it. I'm not going to do anything that's going to intervene with somebody else's free will. Um... Thank you for this. I have such a connection with the South, even though I'm from England. I'm fascinated by the history and the culture of voodoo. Julie, is that Psy Three High or Julie? Girl, you probably had a past life here then. I would say if you're super fa fascinated, fascinated with the Southern history, um, you might have been here before. I don't know if you've ever visited the South, Julia. If you haven't, I would absolutely 
encourage you. If, if you come to the South, I would. So there's three sisters of the South. The three sisters of the South are Charleston, Savannah, and New Orleans. So I would highly recommend Julie you visiting all three of those those uh, cities. Charleston is the beautiful uh, city. Savannah is the dirty city. Or sorry. Charleston is the beautiful sister, Savannah is the dirty sister, and New Orleans is the wicked sister, but they're all three of the sisters of the South. St. Augustine is also a great city. It's in Florida. It's one of the oldest cities in the United States. Um, I think you should plan a trip, a road trip. Come over here, rent a car, and just gallivant around the South and see and see what you find. Um, you're an hour north of Charleston. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm your old neighbor about an hour north of Charleston, so I know exactly what you're talking about, even if I've never dabbled in it myself. I know of people. Yep. Even an old friend of mine told me that she, she, old friend of mine that she was told how to do a love spell and it involved urine and sweet tea. Yep. Let's just say that she left him years ago and he still was in love with her. See, it's it's not fair, is it? It's absolutely not fair to do this. Um, even when he was in other late relationships, so it must work. I'm sure if he knew this, he could have the spell broken by the absolutely. So if you you think you've been put under a love spell, you need to find yourself a rude doctor. I can't help you. I'm not that's not I'm not at that. Um I'm not at that level of you have to I would tell you to find somebody who is literally um well trained in this. Okay. I love this overprotected one, one, one. You said agreed for the light. One time I actually did a love spell. Long story, horrible ending. Louisiana here. You know that I love it when people can admit this kind of stuff because my, even though it wasn't right to do that overprotected one, 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 if you learned from that experience and it taught you something, then you obviously completed some karma. You obviously learned from the experience. Now you know why not you don't do it. And now you practice for the light. So that is awesome. Overprotective. I think I even commented that to you. Um, uh, my internet's being kind of wacky guys. I think it's because of the, uh, the, um, storm. Yeah. Yeah. You're back in the light. Once you course correct, that's all it takes is just course correcting. All right. So I covered this just out of curiosity. Can a man do this to this a woman? I feel like it may have been done to me a couple of times. I've been very attracted to a couple of guys for no good reason at all. Uh, yeah, I think I covered that at the beginning with the S. So, you know, again, just make sure. I would say, too, I said this in the first video. Even though more people practice this kind of stuff than you would, you would imagine, um, first make sure it's not just a you thing. Like, go make sure it's not your shadow side that's doing this. Go to therapy, do what you got to do. But if, the, if it's still consisting or persisting, I would then maybe just get someone to check that there's things you can do like you can put an egg yolk in a bowl and drop matches in there and if they touch a cross to tell you if you've been messed with energetically um you can look that up guys for yourself perhaps they, there's things they can do to see if you've actually been messed with energetically but my question is too like if you find out that you were not messed with energetically this was all you like how would people how would you feel about that how would people feel about that like i i think for me i would be a little bit relieved because it becomes more in my control Right now, I know that this is a weakness within me that I've got to work on, if that makes sense. All right. So we answered that. Uh, if Gypsy is pregnant, how would she get the red, su red substance for the spell and the spaghetti? Again, um, you jar it. Again. All right. In, uh, in Savannah. Yep. Yeah, that's the one of the sisters of the South. Um, but Gypsy is pregnant. She, yeah, again, she jars it. Women who have a hysterectomy, I mean, you can use, again, urine is, is a second choice. Um, again, nothing is ever going to be as potent as um, your lining, but urine can also work too. But don't do this. So this is one of the comments I really want to talk about because this comment very much concerns me. Calling out Dr. John takes confidence. I, too, drink in his master classes. Remarkable couple who on the ships wholly own the stock in trade besides brazil took 60 percent. everyone acts like the south is cornered the market it's all right so this is one of the most concerning comments i have ever seen and this is a sign of the times and i'm going to talk about this because this is complete bs so I, I responded i said as i have said i love that channel but i think he got this case completely wrong because he doesn't understand southern culture He's not from the South. I said this in the first video. I was like, he doesn't, he's not from the South. Have we really come to a place in our history where we have to all agree 100% with everyone all the time? If so, that's a scary place to be. 
I can have the utmost respect for Dr. John, but still point out where I see some obvious mistakes. And as a, and as I pointed out in the video, it's not even his fault he got it wrong. He just doesn't know Southern culture. But if he were to take a step back and research Southern culture, I think his opinion would probably be changed. I would really ask you to reconsider your comment here. To be afraid to point out wrong information or claim it takes confidence to point out where something isn't accurate is a very scary place to be historically. We should never censor ourselves if we still some feel something is incorrect. And we should never try to silence others because they're trying to point something out. Anytime that behavior has happened historically, it hasn't ended well for humanity. Not to mention, black and white thinking is a very toxic and mentally unhealthy way to think. To think anyone, including Dr. John, is infallible is dangerous. And personally, from what I see of Dr. John, I don't think he would mind that I pointed this out. I hope you understand that there is a difference between pointing out a flaw, flaw let me rephrase that. I hope you understand that there is a difference between pointing out flawed information or criticizing an opinion versus criticizing the person. As stated in this video and in this comment, I love hidden true crime. Just because I think they got one thing wrong does not mean I respect them any less. So I spoke about Dr. John in the first video. I love Hidden True Crime. I love Dr. John. I love Laura. It's one of my favorite channels on YouTube. If you have not watched Hidden True Crime, you guys should absolutely watch it. And he did a video on Gypsy Rose. And he starts it off by speaking about where Gypsy talked about putting the her mom putting the cow tongue with her lining in the backyard. And how he, he focused on that. My criticism was that he does not understand, obvious, obviously does not understand that this is a normal part of the Southern culture. But I think what happened was Gypsy put that out there to manipulate the story. Because if anybody's practicing black magic, in my opinion, it's Gypsy, not her mother. So she's flipping the narrative. So with Dr. John's analysis of Gypsy, with that information, what Gypsy did worked on Dr. John. She manipulated Dr. John. But that's because... Dr. John is obviously not familiar with Southern culture. He's not familiar that this is just normal. That's why I think a lot of people in the South just, that was a nothing burger. Like I said, when I saw her say that, that was a nothing burger to me. I was like, she's from, she's from New Orleans. Like, it's just like a, it's just like a regular Wednesday, a regular Tuesday for us. But for somebody, I think Dr. John says he says he's from Chicago. Maybe I know they live in uh, Nevada now. They talk, our Vegas, they talk about it. Um, so obviously they're not from, so they would not have, it's just like if I don't know anything really about Chicago culture. You know, I know a little bit about it from what you see in the movies, and I've been to Chicago, but I don't know anything about the intricacies of living day to day there. So he doesn't know anything about the intricacies of being born and bred Southern. Yeah. So that was my criticism that I think he's been manipulated by Gypsy. I think I think he fell for it because he doesn't understand Southern culture. And I really pray that we're not at this place historically. Criticizing someone's opinion or saying, hey, I don't think you have this right because obviously you don't understand where this is coming from is not criticizing the person. I think Dr. John is unbelievable. I agree with most of the stuff he puts out. I think his insight is so fascinating. Just because I don't agree with one thing he says does not mean that my respect for him is any less. And if we're at this place in society where we think we have to 100% agree with everyone at all times, we are heading in some, to some very dangerous places. But anytime historically where this has happened, we've ended up with mass casualties, communism, Hitler. We need to be in a place where we can talk about these things. And again, to make it seem like I am calling him out or or being nasty to him simply because I think he misread this piece of information. And as I said, again, I said this in the first video, it's not his fault. He's not from the South. It's not his fault. He's not from the South. So it worked. The manipulation worked on him because he doesn't know that this is a part of everyday culture here in the South. Doesn't mean I respect him any less. He's not Superman. He doesn't know every culture thoroughly. But if he's a smart man, which I think he is, as I said, if he understood this, that this was part of culture, I think he would change his opinion. 
because us from the South, that was a nothing burger for us. us. And now looking at what it did to Dr. John, I can see how she used it as a manipulation for people who don't know that. Okay. So criticizing somebody's opinion is not criticizing them. Now let's talk about Brazil. Cause I, I don't know how old you are. What's your name? Um, Holly Bigwood. I don't know how old you are. I'm 41. If you're younger than me, I'm going to kind of possibly blame this on education because when you are learning to tell stories, which any type of YouTube channel, any even hidden true crime, delivering information in a good way is a form of what we call storytelling. It doesn't mean it's false. You just figure out that's how I run my channel when I do my deep dives, right? I, I run them in a form of storytelling. So when I do my deep dives, which this video isn't a deep dive, but when I do my deep dives, I take the information, and I figure out a way to tell it, to deliver it, to make it entertaining, to make it interesting. With that being said, when you have a story, any information in that story that's useless to the story is cut. All right. It has to be useful information to the subject of the story. This is common sense with writing, with storytelling, with movies. You don't have useless information just in, in the video. Now, you brought up Brazil. And again, I'm just going to go on the assumption that you're much younger than me and didn't have because we know the education system is shit now. So. I'm just going to assume that you didn't have this type of teaching in your school because let me just read you what I wrote. Um, and bringing Brazil into this comment section has nothing to do with this video. Gypsy is from the South. Hence why we're talking about Southern culture. Gypsy is not from Brazil. Yes, Brazil has magical practices, but please explain to me what this has to do with Gypsy's case and the culture she comes from. Again, this is a video about Gypsy. It's not about Brazil. So I'm a little bit confused as to why you think Brazil has somehow been sidelined in this video when none of the subjects spoken about in this video are connected to Brazil. Also, two things can be true. Since you brought Brazil up, yes, there is a magic there are magical practices in Brazil. And yes, magical practices are a heavy part of the culture in the south. This does not mean that one is better than the other. They're just two different places that have a lot of cultural significance with magic. But again, Brazil isn't a part of Gypsy's story, so there's no need to mention that. It would be silly and unnecessary for me to mention all the countries that practice magic when only one country is significant to the story. Do you see the problem in your comment? I hope I'm explaining this in a way that's understandable when you're storytelling you never add information that isn't relative to the story and also i'm going to elaborate the magic that is practiced in brazil is not the same as the magic that's practiced in the deep south just like the magic that's practiced in oklahoma as our friend earlier shared is more native american in its heritage the magic practice in the deep south is a combination of native american voodoo and Christianity, but it's heavy on the voodoo side. It's heavy on the African side. Every single demographic, every single culture that has a culture in magic is going to be different depending on the dominating factors of that culture. Okay? So I don't understand why you were bitter about Brazil not being mentioned. Again, explain to me how Brazil has anything to do with Gypsy's story. Brazil, nobody is criticizing Brazil. Brazil is a beautiful country. I got friends from Brazil. It's a beautiful country. It's got a fascinating history and a fascinating culture. And by talking about Gypsy in the Deep South and not bringing up Brazil does not negate the fact that Brazil has its own power and its own beauty. But Brazil having its own power and its own beauty does not negate the fact that so does the Deep South. So I'm very confused as to why you somehow think Brazil's being sidelined when Gypsy Rose Blanchard's story has fuck all to do with Brazil. Okay. You want me to throw Peru in there? My friend, Cindy, who I talked about earlier, she's from Peru. I mean, is this a narcissistic thing? I don't really know. Cause it sounds extremely narcissistic to me. And that's just my opinion. Your comment here, I'm not saying you're a narcissist, but your comment here sounds extremely unhinged and extremely narcissistic. The fact that you don't think I should actually say Dr. John was wrong when I'm from the South and Gypsy's from the South and there are elements to this story that someone who's from the South is not going to pick up on. But I'm not allowed. I can't, I can't, can't, I'm takes confidence to call. 
I don't think Dr. John, and that's, this is my opinion. I don't think Dr. John would even care that I called him out. I think he has more confidence in himself than that. And just again, because I point out where someone's opinion is flawed because they're missing information does not mean I respect the person any less. But then bringing about the Brazil comment makes me think you're a bit of a narcissist. You've got some, not, not a narcissist, you've got some narcissistic traits. So assuming you have a connection to Brazil and you're upset that your connection to a country wasn't brought up in a story that has absolutely nothing to do with you or nothing to do with your country. So when you're telling a story or reporting a story, you're not going to bring in information that isn't relative to that story. There's also a lot of occult magic that happens in Quebec, Canada. Should I have talked about that? Actually, there is more of a connection to Canada for Gypsy than there is from Brazil because Acadia, the occasion came from the Acadia area of Canada. So they have more of a connection to the story, even though they have really no connection because that happened hundreds of years ago. Should I talk about them as well? Should I talk more about the other Native American tribes in the western part of the United States that practice magic? Because their magic is different from, should I talk about the Druids and the Celtics who practice magic? What about the people in Africa? What about India, China? Do you want me to talk about all the countries that practice magic in relationship to, to Gypsy Rose? You see how absurd that is. That is absurd. Because none of those other cultures affect the story like the Southern culture. Does that, do you guys understand that? So any narcissism, any triggers, if you're triggered by the fact that I'm talking about magic in another country, then that's your problem. So big Holly Bigwood, this is your trigger, girl. You need to figure out why you're triggered by a story that has fuck all to do with Brazil. Why do you feel the need to insert information into a story that has nothing to do with the actual story? Do you understand? Like, this is ridiculous. This is absurd. Critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills here. And you say here, acts like the South corner of the market. We're talking about the South. Nobody's acting like the South corner of the market. We're talking about the South. We're talking about the eccentric Southern culture and why this black magic is prevalent with Gypsy. We're not talking. Gypsy is not from any other part of the world. She is from the South. Same as me. Same as a lot of people in the comment section. She was born in Louisiana. She is from the South. I was born in South Carolina. I live in Georgia. I'm from the South. Why the fuck would I then talk about another country in relationship to a Southern story? Absurd. 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 So I think, Holly Bigwood, you need to do some self-reflection. Reflecting. Because... You got some narcissistic traits, girl, or I don't know if it's illiteracy or ignorance, but this is ridiculous. So anyway, all right, you guys. Um, and again, I did, the only comments that I blocked are the ones um, that had to do with people calling us, telling us we we're going to hell because, you know, Jesus this and Jesus that. Well, first of all, if you have not figured out that the uh, church is heavily involved in the occult and witchcraft, then I don't know what to tell you because at this point, in order to not recognize that the church is heav heavily involved in the occult and in witchcraft, you either have to be really dumb or willingly ignorant. The word Jesus comes from Zeus. His name was Yahshua. It's not even his name. So, um, but I will block that because I'm not putting up with that. You know, having different a difference of opinions and conversations is one thing, but telling people that they're going to go to hell because we're talking about this is it something entirely different and that abuse will not be tolerated on this channel. All right, you guys who I just, sorry, I got a little heated in that last comment. It just pisses me off when people turn things and twist things. And I pisses me off when people try to censor others and censor others from challenging the narrative. It pisses me off when people try to, again, the whole Brazil thing, just like it, it's a twist. It's twisting things, right? It's not the truth. It's deviating from the truth. So Anyway, and I think most people get that. Obviously, most people watching that that first video understood that we were talking about the South, hence why Southern culture was a part of the conversation. So um, I know most of you get that. But anyway, all right, you guys. Um, and if Dr. John sees this, I don't think personally, dude, I don't think he would be offended by me saying you got it wrong because I do believe you absolutely got the Gypsy Rose thing wrong. And I think you got you started off wrong because you were focused on the wrong thing, which I think Gypsy Rose did that in intentionally to manipulate people who don't know which is people who aren't from the south so um i think if you were to revisit that dr john and consider and if you want to email me you can esoteric gmail.com i can kind of explain this to you if you want a, a better understanding 
I don't think Dee Dee Blanchard was doing any sorts of black magic. I think Gypsy's been doing black magic, but I think if anything, Dee Dee Blanchard was doing the same shenanigans, the same stuff that all of us Southern people do. Just a little spell work here and there for good, for protection, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, you guys, um, let me know if there's more you want me to talk about. Um, if you want me to talk more about fertility stuff, I don't know. Let me know. You guys let me know. Again, it's hard for me to to figure out what to talk about because I'm this is I'm just so used to this stuff. So if you guys give me a topic you want me to talk about when it comes to this woo-woo witchy stuff, um, I can I can do that for you if you want me to. So anyway, you guys, um, if you haven't, though, if you are super interested in this, I do have a playlist to get on New Orleans and Savannah. I do talk about the Haitian Revolution, all that kind of stuff down there. So anyway, check that essay down there because the playlist should be down in the description box below for you guys. So anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope everybody in the Southeast, speaking of the South, deep South, I hope all you guys are safe from the hurricane. Sorry, I'm not saying sorry, I'm not saying I hope people in Brazil are safe. I hope people in Brazil are safe, but the southeast right now, for those who don't in the back who didn't hear, the southeast right now is going through a hurricane. So that's why I'm saying I hope people in the southeast are safe. It's not negating the fact that I don't care about people in other parts of the world. It's just right now we're in the middle of a hurricane. So anyway, never thought there would be a time in history where we would actually have to explain that, but apparently we do. So anyway, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And let me know down in the comment section if you are from another part of the world. I love hearing these stories. Let me know what type of magic you learn and your part of the world and i know most people as as from the previous comments who shared their stories from their parts of the world understood from their comments that we talked about the south because this is a southern story so anyway all right you guys have a wonderful day i will talk to you soon